2.8. Here are our objectives. Number one, find the distance between two points. Number two, find the midpoint of a line segment. Number three, write the standard form of a circle's equation. Um, number four, give the center and radius of a circle whose equation is in standard form. And then number five, convert the general form of a, an equation, circle's equation to standard form. Okay? So, let me get my paper in order. First of all, let's find the distance between two points, which means you have to know or remember the distance formula. Do you? So, um, distance formula. Do we need? Do I need to give you two points and go through this? An example, just to remind you of the distance formula. You're okay with? What about midpoint formula? Do you remember that one? Yes. Do you need an example of midpoint? You got that? You're confident in both of these? Without any examples? All right. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. This you would have seen in geometry. We used to teach it in Algebra 2, but the last time our teeks changed, it got moved down to geometry. Okay. In Algebra 2, we did parabolas. Um, this, this whole section of, of stuff is called conic sections. There are four main conic sections, circle, parabola, ellipse, hyperbola. Circle got moved down to geometry. We kept parabola in Algebra 2, and then ellipses and hyperbolas got moved to pre-cal. I was sad about that because conic sections were one of my favorite things to teach. I, I got over it, though, so it's okay. All right. Um, but this is standard form of a circle. So what do you think you might know? Using transformation rules that we talked about before, what do you think you might know by looking at the standard form of a circle? The center. Where is the center of this circle? And what else do you think you might know? Okay, the radius. And the radius is? R. So if I give you an equation like this, x squared plus y squared equals 36, I need you to tell me the center and the radius. Is that something you think you can do? Well, where's the center? 0, 0, and how do you know that? Correct. Nothing's being added or subtracted from my x term, so my center is at 0, 0. Okay? What about my radius? 6. Because it's the square root of the number that, that it's equal to right there, radius squared. Okay? <clears throat> what about this one? x minus 1 squared plus y plus 4 squared equals 25. Look, I wrote 25, or I said 25 and then wrote 24. That was embarrassing. Where's the center of the circle? 1, negative 4. And what's the radius? Excellent. x plus 2 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 4. Where's the center? Somebody else different this time? Where's the center? Negative 2, 3. And what's the radius? One more example. Somebody different answering this time. X minus 5 squared plus Y minus 1 squared equals 7. Where's the center? 5, 1. And what's the radius? Perfect. So, I reminded you of the distance formula. You said you didn't need any examples. I reminded you of the midpoint formula. 
You said you didn't need examples. That's still true. Okay. Standard form of a circle's equation. That's that right there. Okay. And then being able to give the center and radius of a circle. The equation is in standard form. Is the examples that we just did. Okay. The last thing we need to be able to do is convert the general form into standard form. Okay. So just to remind you, standard form is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Then general form x squared plus y squared plus dx plus e y plus f equals zero is general form. <clears throat> now, I wrote these out specifically for you to see again because we, when, when you talked about this in geometry, you actually called this the general form of a circle, okay? And since it's a difference in vocabulary from, from that curriculum to this curriculum, I wanted to make sure that you understood the difference. Okay, make sure that the, you know what they're talking about when they say standard form and general form. Okay, <clears throat> so what you're going to be asked to do is take an equation like this, x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 6y minus 23 equals 0. Take it from general form to standard form. Okay, the way that we do that is by completing a square. Do you remember us talking about completing a square when we were solving quadratics? Okay, so um, I'm going to go kind of slow just to make sure that we remember everything that we need to do here. Is that okay with you? Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to gather like terms. Okay, we're going to move stuff around here and we're going to gather like terms. I'm going to say x squared and then plus 4x, so I'm just moving that one over here. Okay, then because I know I'm completing the square, I'm going to leave myself some room. And then I'm going to have y squared minus 6x, sorry, minus 6y. And again, I'm going to leave myself some room. And at the same time I'm doing that, I'm going to be moving the 23 by adding it to both sides. Because in general form, it needs to equal 0. But in standard form, it needs to equal radius squared. Okay, so I'm going to get that constant over to the other side. So this is going to equal 23. All right. Now I need to fill in these two spaces right here by completing the square. Do you remember how to complete the square, or should I remind you? Okay, so take this term right here, divide it by 2, and square it. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So I'm add 4 here, but if I add it to one side of the equation, perfect, add it to the other. Okay, so I did that with the x's, now I need to do the same thing with the y's. Take this b term, the middle term, and divide it by 2 and square it. So 6 divided by 2 is 3 and 3 squared, 9. Now, whenever we complete the square, will I ever minus something? No, because you remember, even if it's a negative 6 like it is here, negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3, but negative 3 squared is positive 9. That's why we don't really like pay attention to that sign when we are completing a square. Okay? All, we always divide it by 2 and square it. Whatever, whatever this middle term is right here, the term that's not being squared, either the x term or the y term that's not being squared, I divide it by 2 and square it always to complete the square. Okay, But I added 9 here, so I need to add 9 on the other side of the equation as well. Okay. Now this is actually called a perfect square trinomial, and we did that on purpose. We actually completed the square on purpose because I would like to factor this from its trinomial to its perfect square binomial because that's going to make things actually in the form that I need. So there's two ways I can think about this. Um, first of all, I could just straight up factor it. What multiplies to be 4 and adds to be 4? 2 and 2, right? So it would be x plus 2 times x plus 2. Or I could go straight to x plus 2. It's either the square root of this number or half of the middle number. It'll be that way every time. Square root of the last term or the half of the middle term. Okay. Now the only thing we have to pay attention to is the sign. We have to take the sign for med our middle term. Okay. So 
That's our x term when we take it to the binomial. Now our y term when I take it to the binomial, y minus 3. It's either half, uh, sorry, square root of 9 or half of 6, and the negative 6 will tell me that my sign needs to be a negative 3. Okay? And that's going to equal 23 plus 4 plus 9, which is excellent. And from here, if I was asked, I could say that the center of the circle is perfect, negative 2, 3, and that the radius is 6. Any questions? You got it? Do you need any more examples of those? I'll be happy to give you some more.